What's going on GQ? I'm Daniel Ricardo, Formula One driver, sometimes very fast, and today I'm going undercover on the internet. Let's do it. It's actually me. Cora. What's Cora? Why does Daniel Ricardo squat before racing? Glad you noticed. It's kind of a comfortable position for me. Open up the hips, the adductors. Sound like I know what I'm doing. And it's just a way for me to kind of get into my like little space. I've got my headphones on. It's my happy, quiet place before essentially I go into battle. I could never do that squat a few years ago. Now I can and I like it very much. <laughs> All right, next one. How does jet lag affect F1 drivers given that they are rounding the globe literally throughout the year? Honest answer, I am jet lag as we speak. <laughs> so it's something you just learn to deal with. We can prepare a little bit, you know, so before a certain time zone, we might try to adapt a few nights before getting onto that time zone, but sometimes you just kind of have to suck it up and push through it. Everyone thinks like you get used to it. Oh, you've been doing it for so long, but uh, sometimes it's luck. Sometimes I will sleep awesomely and sometimes not. What is the typical diet of an F1 driver? Well, we have to stay light. So that's, yeah, we certainly need some diet, if you will, to maintain weight or maintain a low weight. Every extra bit of weight we carry can be a detriment to our lap time. So like 10 kilos, I guess that's 22 pounds, is about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a second per lap. So that's a lot in racing terms. So yeah, we need to stay light. I mean, fortunately, like I like my veggies, I like all that sort of stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty good if I need to stay lean, I, I can. At the age I am, I'm still quite fortunate. Like my metabolism is, is moving at a rapid rate. So I'm, uh, I'm able to keep the weight off pretty easily. So I can still afford to have some good meals and not struggle too much with that. Posted. Instagram. Alrighty. We need your playlist, please. So yes, I love music and I'm kind of like a music snob in a way where I've always been into stuff that not everyone finds straight away. Like I love being the first to find something or at least within my group of friends, like, hey, check this guy out or check this girl out or this group. I'm like, this is, this is something, I've always loved it. I have a thing called like three by three. So it's three songs by me, the three, that's my race number. Um, and I'll do that like every week. So I'll do like three of my favorite songs maybe that I'm listening to that week and I'll put them up on, on my story. So people appreciate that, but I ain't gonna go sharing a playlist just like that. You know, this is, I, I worked hard to build these playlists. So I'll, I'll drip feed them, I'll drip feed them. <laughs> it must be interesting to know what is the feeling of the F1 drivers when they're driving a simple car. I'm very happy driving a normal car on the road and just kind of doing it simple. Everyone asks like, do you drive fast on the road? Like, do you just always want to impress your friends and stuff? And I think because we race the fastest cars in the world, we simply like get it out of our system. I guess the desire to like drive fast on the road, it's not, it's not there. And I'm more like, I'm chill, like play music, put the windows down, I'm happy. There has been people that have pulled up next to me like at a set of lights. And there was one guy once in like a, a sports car and I was not in a sports car at that time. And he's like revving it and he wanted to race me. I was like, yeah, yeah, let's race. And I was being sarcastic. So he went off at the lights and he won and he probably still tell his friends to this day that he beat me in a race. <laughs> Still on the Bills Mafia hype today, question mark. Well, I'm gonna answer that right now, absolutely. Even more so than what I was on this day that the photo was taken. I've really, really got into NFL the last, uh, the last few years and I am Bills Mafia for life now. I ain't leaving. TikTok, oh, the platform which I really don't enjoy. <laughs> Top three wishes for the new owners of F1. Race in Vegas. How excited is Daniel for Vegas? I wonder if he's gonna be in those casinos or leave with a new tattoo. So I do really like Vegas. I went through a good run at Vegas where I was going every year for a few years, if not twice a year, but I'm not really a, a casino player. I, I just love the, the pool parties, the day parties, and then they inevitably flow into the, the night scene. So it was kind of a time where I was just really enjoying letting my hair down and having a good time and Vegas was my happy place. I think Vegas is gonna test us when we have to compete there for sure. The way I'll approach it is like, I'm there for a job and if I do that job well, then I can enjoy, you know, Vegas, I guess the night of the race or the night after the race, or maybe I'll stay for a few days. But um, I'm also in my thirties now. So, you know, I'm not like mid late twenties anymore. So I don't know, maybe Vegas, maybe that was a time in my life. We'll see, we'll see how tempted I get going back. 
Do the boys do their own straps or do they get strapped in by one of the crew and why? We don't have enough mobility in that confined space to like do the buckles. So one of the mechanics will do the belts for us because there's quite a few points. I think there's like four clipping points, but then I, I like to like do the last part, like tighten them up. So like the shoulders I'll do myself just to a level where I'm comfortable. I do like them pretty tight because once we start going on track, like once you start pulling three, four, five Gs, you'll move. Like you'll think the belts are tight, but you're still gonna move. So I like to give them a good, a good yank. All right, Twitter. Has a single person enjoyed drinking from Daniel Ricardo's shoe? According to these photos, no, they most certainly have not. I think they're proud after the fact. Over the years, I have certainly made it a thing, the shoey on the podium. Like I know if I was involved in it, if it wasn't my thing and you know, I'll be like, this is quite cool. Like it's, it's fun story to tell. But uh, I think the, in the moment it's tough cause I've raced, you know, 90 minutes in this boot and it's pretty hot, especially where our feet are in the car. There's no ventilation or anything. So there's definitely a lot of sweat and uh, it's kind of gross. So I get it that they don't enjoy the moment but I think they enjoy the story. It's one for the grandkids. Getting a podium in F1 is a big deal and it's, it should be something that's celebrated. And I didn't always feel like people celebrated it very well. Sometimes it was a little like stiff. I want to shake it up. I want to have some fun with it. I was like, I'm either going to get booed or cheered. Unfortunately, I got cheered. This was one of the greatest days of my life. It's the last corner in Monaco. This was my me about to win the race. So this was last corner, last lap. Can we talk about how much of a madman Daniel Ricciardo is? Bro took the final corner of 2018 Monaco Grand Prix with one hand on the wheel and putting his other hand up in the sky. I'm fucking nuts, I guess. I am mad. I am a psychopath. Obviously you watch other sports and any top athlete in their given sport can do something crazy. You're like, mind's blown. Like, how do they do that? But for them, it's probably not that crazy. So for me, like this is not that crazy. When reading the comment, I'm like, actually, yeah, it is kind of crazy. But in the moment, like I was fully in control when I could see the finish line on this day, I was kind of so ecstatic and so overwhelmed with joy that it wasn't even about me like being cocky or anything. It was just about me literally like going through the greatest moment in my sporting life. I couldn't celebrate soon enough. Next one, why TF? Is Daniel Ricciardo joking about retiring? He's literally the only reason I watch this sport. I also like how it's been worded, like kind of aggressive at me, but then it's also like really sweet. If I was seriously thinking about retiring, it's stuff like this, which would really make me second guess it. Cause I'm like, man, like I, obviously I do it like for me and I do it because I believe I can still do it at the best and the highest level. But I also can have a positive effect on other people and really give them something to like be excited for. So this sort of stuff definitely like makes me want to do it longer. So that's actually really cool. Replied, do F1 drivers go to the toilet in their suits and how do they drink water during a race? Lewis Hamilton claims he has never done it while Daniel Ricciardo admits every little curb you hit hurts. I've never gone to the toilet in my suit. Uh, whilst driving. And by the toilet we're talking about number ones, we're not talking about number twos here. That's just, that's just ridiculous. The very last thing we do or try to do before we get into the car is like go to the bathroom because we're sat down in the car for 90 minutes or so. So you obviously don't have a chance. So you're normally pretty good, but there is time certainly where you have an urge, but I, I don't think I could physically do it because we're also strapped in like really tight and we're really like compressed. We all know that you kind of need to relax. <laughs> to be able to go. Also, when you're driving at the speeds we do under the forces we're under, I just feel it would be very, very, very hard to relax and be able to do it. So at least I can't. And also I don't really want to out of respect for the mechanics that are then going to clean my car after the race. And when I say like every little curb hurts, yeah, like, you know, if you have to go like any little bump or vibration or shake, it stings. <laughs> and then how do we drink during a race? So we have basically a pack and that'll have a drinks tube, coming through it, it'll connect to our helmet. And then we have a tube running like under through the helmet. So I'll have like a straw that sits just to the side of my mouth during the race. And then when I want to drink, I'll just like reach my hand up, like normally on a straight where you have a few seconds, I'll reach my hand up, like flick the straw in my mouth, get a few gulps, flick it back out of my mouth and then get going again. So well, I say get going again, continue to be going. YouTube. 
LOL, why are the drivers always so funnily awkward in these group press interviews? I think we do so many interviews, we do so much media, you end up becoming a little bit sometimes delirious. I mean, especially when you're with your teammate, like you know that there's bigger fish to fry on that weekend. Like we're probably getting ready to go out soon for like a qualifying session or something. So you end up trying to just have a bit of fun with it and sometimes being a bit silly. Because we do so many, I think if you like let them get to you, then you just, you're gonna kind of be miserable. So yeah, you just give each other a bit of banter kind of poke at each other a little bit, have a bit of fun. And it does sometimes come across as very awkward. Next. I love how Drive to Survive made it seem as though there was tension between Lando and Danny Rick. They over-dramatized a season that was dramatic enough on its own, LOL. Drive to Survive, especially the 2021 season, was a crazy season in F1. There was a lot of authentic drama, a lot of chaos, a lot of stuff going on. I think Drive to Survive certainly ran with that and at times probably like sprinkled a little bit more on top. So there was a rivalry between myself and Lando, which, you know, wasn't really there. I think it was just, I was new to the team. So it was the first time we'd work together. So it's us trying to kind of establish a relationship. I guess like figure each other out. So for sure, like from day one, we're not compatible or like best friends out of the box. You know, that, that kind of thing took a bit of time. The show added a bit of spice to that, but there, there wasn't any spice. We're, we're competitive, but um, there wasn't any uh, spice, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Wikipedia. There's a lot of outlets. I, I didn't, I kind of forgot all these existed. All right, Wikipedia. He is often referred to as the honey badger, referencing his racing style, explaining how it's supposed to be the most fearless animal in the animal kingdom. When you look at it, he seems quite cute and cuddly, but as soon as someone crosses his territory in a way he doesn't like, he turns into a bit of a savage and he'll go after anything. Tigers, pythons, he turns very quickly, but he's a good guy. I guess that's my quote. So yeah, I my nickname is the honey badger. I don't think people always took me that seriously and kind of respected my competitive side. But deep down, like I know how much of a competitor I am and I know that I can like get my teeth stuck in. I needed to let this come out, you know, to really establish myself in Formula One and to turn a little bit of like my easygoing reputation around. I kept the kind of the cool, easygoing demeanor off track, but on track, I was like being talked about the most kind of like aggressive overtaker and like the guy that other drivers would fear all this sort of stuff. And that, that, was, that was really cool for me to be able to execute because I knew I had it in me, but yeah, letting it out benefited me tremendously in my career. Reddit. If Daniel Ricciardo came to NASCAR, how do you see it playing out if he did? I am a fan of NASCAR. I love motorsport. I grew up watching NASCAR for sure. It's something which I'll definitely like to try one day. I don't know if I would just jump into NASCAR and be like, yeah, I want to race this weekend, you know, with the guys that have been doing it their whole life and are perfectionists at that discipline. I wouldn't want to humiliate myself. I would certainly like to drive a car competitively, but maybe like in a test session or something. But the truth is, unless I did a lot of testing and preparation, I'd probably get my ass handed to me. So I don't need that. <laughs> this was Top Gear. Didn't he beat Hamilton's time in the same car? The answer is yes, I broke the record for this lap time, this segment in the show. I believe it was a fairly long-standing record. I think Hamilton had it for a few years and it was actually a big moment. I was really proud. Then the show discontinued. I believe at least I'm the all-time winner who cannot be beat and I'm proud. If I never win a F1 world title, I have this. Posted. Fun fact. So not only did Daniel Ricciardo get credit as the percussionist on the man himself, but he also got a shout out in Goal of the Century on the Gang of Youth's new album. Ah, oh, this is so cool. So it's the rabbits are chasing, Ricciardo is racing. I love music. I don't play. I'm not a musicianist or a musician, a musicianist. I'm not a musician. Music really speaks to me. Uh, there is something inside me which yeah, just relates tremendously to music. Gang of Youths is an Australian band who I, I got to know over the last few years and I'm a big fan of them. The lead singer, Dave, when they were making the new album was like, oh, I'm gonna give you a shout out in the album. And I was kind of like, oh yeah, like I didn't think much of it. And then when they finished the album, he sent me a link to it uh, before it got released. He goes, check out the last song on the album. And it's quite a long song and it gets to about the sixth minute and I hear the line, Ricardo is racing. And I was, <laughs> even now I'm like, 
<laughs> it's it's like such a big deal for me. Off track, one of my most proud moments is to be shouted out in a song. Another song on the album, The Man Himself. So yeah, we did percussion. So we went to watch them record to two friends and actually people I, I, I work with. We went to watch them record in studio and then it was kind of like, do you want to be on the album? We're like, we can't play, like we, we suck. And they talked us through it and eventually we made enough noise that it was worthy of the album. It's uh, in kind of the opening sequence of the man himself. Just living all my dreams right now. Okay, that's it. Signing off the internet. <laughs>